Hi guys and welcome to this video. I recently uploaded a video about an egg incubator I designed with Arduino and Proteus in which I explain how it works and also which libraries you have to install in order to compile the project. Here is the cool part. This video received a lot of attention in a quite short period of time and was appreciated by many people. I was also pleased to see that some subscribers went as far as implementing the project in their farms in India and South Africa. Although the code worked perfectly, it was not easily comprehensible. I therefore received a lot of questions regarding some parts of the program. This made me understand that the program was not written in a clear manner. And to fix this, I decided to refactor the code and rewrite it in a way that even someone with no prior programming experience will understand. I will admit that I didn't understand some parts of the code when I went back to it and that it took me paradoxically more time to refactor the code than when I actually wrote it for the first time. In this video, I will walk you through the system functionalities, how the program is structured and organized, and more importantly, how to install the necessary libraries and library versions required for compiling the project. Although a compiled version is already available in the Git repository as a hex file, you will still need to install these libraries as you might want to tweak the program and personalize it to suit your specific use case. You will find in the video description the link to the GitHub repository, which contains the program and other project files. Too much talking, now let's move to the interesting part of this video. Like I said previously, the link to the project files are provided in the description of this video. So you can either copy that and go to any browser of your choice and paste it and hit enter or you simply click on the link and it will take you to this GitHub repository. So once you're on the GitHub repository, click on code on this down arrow and you download the zip. So we are going to download the zip file and once you download the zip file, you probably have it in your downloads and I have it here, so you have it here as a zip file and you simply have to unzip this so you click on it and then you make a right click and you go extract all. So once you extract all, this is Z that I have already extracted. So once you open the folder, you will see the project files. Here, for example, we have the Proteus design and here we have the Arduino program. So, and this folder is using platform IO, but it's not in the scope of this video because we are dealing only with Arduino. So simply, this is the Arduino folder where you can find the program. So the first thing is I'm going to show you how the Proteus design is organized. So to open that, you have to make sure you have a Proteus version installed in your computer and you simply double click on this and it's going to open. Like I said before, it's an egg incubator and we are using the Arduino Nano as the microcontroller and here we have our DHT22, which is the temperature and humidity sensor. We have our LCD display. And here we have our humidifier pin, which is important when we want to increase the level of humidity, if the level of humidity is down. And we have our heater and our fan pin. So this is basically the system. And this buzzer is used like an alarm in case there is any problem. Maybe the temperature is very high, even when the fan system is already activated to reduce the temperature. And here we have our motor. This motor is important for the rotation of the egg. You can simply navigate to the place where you have your files and you click there to select the program versions. But if you download it directly, the software will already be in the microcontroller. You can always click here on start and the system is going to start. As you can see, this is our LCD and it's reading the temperature and the humidity. And this is exactly what you have here. And here you can always decide to change the temperature and humidity. And you will notice that this will be reflected on our LCD display. During the incubation, it is important to set the number of days or other parameters like temperature and humidity for the incubation time. So to do that, use long press on the menu and there you can always change the temperature set point, for example, 27 or 28 or depending on what you want. And you can go to the next parameter by clicking on OK and you can either reduce this or increase. If you set this to 28, if the temperature is in the range 28 plus or minus 2.4 degrees, nothing is done but if it goes above that the cooling system is activated and if it goes below the heating system is activated and next we go to the humidity is the same for the temperature you can set that and after that you have the threshold this threshold is important for the alarm so if it goes two degrees above this interval which is set for the temperature then it's going to raise an alarm because that's important 
and this alarm is going to signal with the buzzer. For now, I didn't connect the buzzer simply because I don't want to be disturbed by the noise. Now, this is the number of days. So you can set 21 days, 30 days, depending on the incubation parameters that you want. And you go to the next. And this is the time during rotation. That's so you know it's important when we are using the egg incubator to rotate the eggs from time to time. For example, the motor can rotate for three seconds and stop. And when it's rotating in the other direction, it rotates for three seconds also and stops. It's true that it's also possible to do it another way to use, for example, a limit switch in such a way that when it rotates in one direction, it presses the limit switch and stops there. And when it rotates in the other direction, if it has reached the final position, it presses the limit switch. And the next parameter is the time between rotation. And this time between rotation, like the name entails, is simply the time between the rotation. So we have to rotate for the first time maybe and we wait again for one hour or two hours because you can set this like you want per your needs or four hours and after four hours it rotates in the next direction it says press ok to save changes or any other key to discard if i want to save the changes i simply press on ok here and now it is saving save successfully and this normally is the number of days but i decided to put this as seconds so that it changes and so you can see it but in the program i'm going to show you what you have to change for this to reflect the number of days and not the number of seconds and one last thing i want to show you is the rotation of the motor now it's supposed to rotate in four hours but i'm simply going to the menu and change the parameters to make it rotate now so i'm going to put zero hours and you will see how the motor is rotating in one direction so i first reduce this to one second for the number of hours i put it zero hours and you will notice that during the first rotation it rotates in one one direction during the second rotation automatically it rotates in the other direction so now it says the t-spin is zero so it means the motor should rotate and now it's rotating to the right for one second after that it's going to rotate to the left for one second and now i want to take you to the programming part where I'm going to explain the program to you and also more importantly, which libraries and library versions you have to install in order to run the program. Go to the folder and you click on the Arduino and for explanatory purposes, I am going to use platform IO and not the Arduino IDE, but it's the exact program that I have here. Platform IO is not in the scope of this video. Like I said, you can write in the comment section if you want me to talk more about platform IO, but I think it's a really great tool for programming of Arduinos. You might see this and think that the program is big, but it's actually not really big. The only principal things are these two functions, the void setup function and the void loop function. If you watch the video, you till this point it means you are probably interested in this type of content i therefore request you to take three seconds of your time to like this video and subscribe to the channel and i promise you that if you subscribe to this channel i will do all my best to provide you with quality content thank you for people who are new to the Arduino environment, we generally have a void setup, which is for the setup or for the initialization of parameters. And we have the void loop function, which is a loop and which runs forever during the execution of the program. The first thing is the initialization. If you want to know more about, you can simply go to definition or you find it if you're using the Arduino IDE. I don't know if this functionality works there, but you can simply go to the definition or search. This is simply initializing the real-time clock and initializing the DHT sensor. Here, the serial monitor is initialized. This is not important. I use this for debugging purposes. Now the LCD is also initialized. So the liquid crystal display or the screen, and this is also part of the initialization of the LCD. And the next thing is to print the welcome message. So if you want to know more about the welcome message, you simply right click and go to definition or you search through the function and you see printing the welcome message. What is it doing? It's simply setting the cursor and writing this and you can always change this according to your needs and your requirement. To continue, I go to the initialization here. So let's go to definition. And the next thing is to create this character. This is creating the arrow character that you saw in the saving menu. When it saves the arrow that progresses, this is where it is created. The next thing is simply attribute memory address to parameter. And if you want to know more, you go to definition. I'm not going to talk about this for now. I will explain this later and you will understand why it's here. The next thing is the timer. The timer is initialized. We want a function to run every second. Then we pass on the function that if you want to know more about what this 
function is doing, you simply go to the definition that it's actually about rotation time, if the rotation time has reached. And now we move to the void loop function. The first thing we do is that we read the temperature and humidity. So after we read the temperature and humidity, we display the dashboard. The dashboard is simply the information that you see here, the temperature, the humidity. If you want to know more about what the dashboard is, you simply go to definition. You notice that it's simply setting the cursor and then printing this. The next point is the temperature and humidity regulation. When I go to the definition, if you want to know more about temperature regulation, you go to definition. If it is in this interval, we don't do anything. So we don't cool the system. We don't heat the system. However, when the temperature or the actual temperature is greater than the set point temperature, we turn the fan on because we want to cool the system and we turn the heater off. The next part is the decount incubation days. So if you go to definition, you see that we are decounting the number of incubation days. If the start date is valid, this is important to make sure that we have set a start date. And also, if the time now is equal to the start date plus this time span of n seconds, this time span is simply a shift in time from a specific day. So, and for now, like you can see, this represents the seconds, this represents the minutes, this represents the hours, and this represents the days. Like you saw in the Proteus design, the number of days left was reducing every seconds. But to change that, you have to put here zero and you replace the end here at the level of the days. And now every day, if you do this every day, it's going to change the value and not every second like before. The next thing after the decount incubation days is the rotation rotation time reached. If the rotation time has reached, we rotate the motor. And if you want to know more about this, we're simply printing here that the rotation time has reached. And after that, it rotates the motor. So it uses this method to rotate the motor. And the next thing is if menu slash OK button is pressed, then we go to menu. The menu, what it's doing, so it simply says here entry menu. And when it enters the menu, it gives the possibility to increase or decrease the set point. You see, for example, if the right button is pressed and the temperature is less than maximum settable temperature, increment this. And the next thing I want to show you guys is which library versions are used for the programming. And this is very important, especially if you want to run the program. And to do this, the first thing you have to do is to make sure that on your Arduino IDE, you go to the tools and you go to board. So you have to select the boards first. You go to board, Arduino AVR boards, and you select the Arduino Nano. And the next thing is to install install the libraries. The first thing we have here is the Arduino library. Actually, you don't need to install this library if you're using the Arduino IDE because it's already inbuilt. The second thing you have to do is to install the Adafruit sensor. And to do that, you simply go here to the left and you click on libraries here and this pops out and you write here simply Adafruit Unified Sensor and you will see this library pop up Adafruit Unified Sensor Library by Adafruit and select the version 1.1.14. I have it installed already. So that's why it says here update. And the next one is the DHT library. Type DHT sensor and you search. You will see here DHT sensor library by Adafruit. And guys, this is very important. Make sure you install the version 1.3.0 because if you don't install this version, you will see on your LCD, it will write NAN at the place of the temperature. And the next library you have to install is the liquid crystal with the I2C. Go to the library manager, liquid crystal, I2C and you search you will see here liquid crystal I2C by Frank 1 Point one point two, And the next one is the EEPROM library. This you don't have to install because it's inbuilt. So the next library is the RTC library by Adafruit and the version 2.1.4. You install that. And the last one is the timer one. Timer one by Stoiko Dimitrov. The version 1.1.1. Once you install these libraries, you can compile or go to the sketch, export compile binary, and then you can have the hexadecimal file in the folder that you have your Arduino program and then there, you can always select that and use in the simulation if you want to make some changes in the program. This is the end of this video and I hope its content was helpful to you. If you have questions regarding the program or any other part of the project, put them in the comment section and we will answer those questions. Also, I would like you to write down in the comment section of this video some topics that you would like us to work on. Thank you very much for watching.